Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. I am very excited to be back, folks. I'm sure some of you heard me say it during the live stream, but I feel many of you perhaps didn't get a chance to watch it, or maybe you're gonna skip the VOD or what have you, but whether you heard it then or you're hearing it now, I am super thrilled to be back at Elite Zoo South, and I have some plans. I've got a lot of plans. I hope you're excited for them as well. Uh, I'll be revealing them as we go along. I sort of talked a little bit about them during the live stream, uh, close to the end of the live stream, but uh, we'll elaborate on those plans as we execute them. We will be adding a new animal today. I feel almost certain that the title and thumbnail have given that away. But before we get into that, there are... Just a couple of things that I want to touch on. The first things, first of the things, sorry, that I want to touch on is uh, if you've been enjoying this series, if you would like to keep it going, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Now in particular, it's always important, but now in particular, as we've sort of taken a little pause and now we're headed back into it, uh, it does make a very big difference because of just how YouTube kind of works as well in terms of how it like sends people recommendations. And even if you've been following the channel for, you know, over a year and a half now or even longer, uh, even if you've been watching every Planet Zoo video, you know, let's say religiously, for lack of a better word, uh, if you didn't watch those Southeast Asia videos, YouTube's going to start thinking that you're not interested. It's going to start thinking that others who used to watch this series are not interested. It'll stop recommending it to folks, and that's always a bit of a slowdown and a, a bit of a bummer, honestly. So now, more than ever, it is important to... Uh, Leave a like and a comment down below if you are a fan of the series and you would like to see it continue strong and healthy. Because I certainly would, of course. And uh, from the sounds of some of the comments from the Southeast Asia Pack DLC Showcase, many of you would as well. It was great to see how many of you were very, very uh, interested and excited to return to uh, to our Franchise Mode series. I was as well, honestly. I was, uh, I was chomping at the bit for the longest time. Couldn't wait to get back and start uh, executing on some of the plans that I had before the Southeast Asia Pack DLC launched. I've had some plans for a while. I've sort of hinted at them in the past, but they've sort of solidified over the last couple of uh, weeks, I suppose, as we've uh, stepped away from Elite Zoo South. What I will say is it's always great how stepping away sometimes does refresh the eye, does refresh the mind. And when we came back, you know, for the for the live stream, it was great to just, like, I feel like that was a great way for uh, for me especially to kind of like get my head back in the game for Elite Zoo South and just re-familiarize myself with the circumstances, the situation, and it was just nice to kind of hang out as well. Uh, but again, if you if you if you made it, that was great. If you didn't make it, that's great. If you want to watch the VOD, uh, you know we do largely a trade session and we do discuss some of the uh, upcoming plans over the next what'll be probably the handful of sessions, let's call it, uh, and then things kind of go. Uh, you know, it's 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 a good idea only to plan so far ahead because you never know what comes through and uh, and changes things. Now on the topic of uh, trading. This is what happened. <laughs> quite a few of you were able to pick up quite a few of our animals. We sold most of the animals at reasonable pricing based on market values and based on genetics. We sold a handful of animals at sort of meme pricing, if you will. But uh, all in all, at the end of the day, this animal storage is as empty as it can ever be. Uh, Carrie over here, the red kangaroo, is headed to Kangaroo Kuyong. She is just a little too young to be traded out. I think she ended up in here when there was like a bug or something that happened that made a lot of the babies appear in the animal storage. You'll remember that happened like maybe a month or a month and a half ago now. Uh, so that's why she's still in here, but we are relocating her to Kangaroo Kuyong. Uh, she should automatically get going as soon as we hit play, which will be in a little bit, maybe actually after our time lapse. Uh, and Red 5, of course, the ever immortal ever-present Red 5 continues to reside at our trade center because, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm just, uh, just that much of a fan, I suppose. Um, now, apart from that, there is one more thing that I would like to mention very quickly over here, folks. This is a little bit later on in the month than usual, yes, but I try to mention this only once a month, and I didn't mention it during the, uh, the DLC, uh, series, but if you've been really, really really enjoying this series and you would like to support its longevity you would like to see it continue you would just like to support it in an extra way again it's never an obligation but i humbly request that maybe you check out my patreon or if you'd rather not do that maybe you consider becoming a channel member to do that you can check out the links in the description down below that's for patreon and for channel membership uh, if you want to be a channel member, you can also instead just click the join button that should show up just below the video. I know for some of y'all, it doesn't actually show up, which is why I have links to both, again, in the description down below. Uh, 
Again, just to be crystal clear, it is not an obligation. Please don't feel that way, but it does make a big difference in uh, supporting the channel, in keeping the channel alive, running smoothly, in keeping these longer running series alive and running smoothly as well. It does make a very big difference. Uh, so it, it is greatly appreciated. Now, I want to mention as well, of course, that with those uh, channel memberships and with Patreon come some perks, as again, those of you that are familiar with the series will already know by now. And it is time to uh, make good on some of those perks for Elitsu South once more. So if you would like to sponsor any of the animals, let me know in the comments down below. If you would like to sponsor even the new animal that we're adding today, you can mention that in the comments down below as well. If you would like to have a staff member named after yourself, then let me know in the comments down below as well. Now, actually, I should clarify, if you're a channel member, let me know in the comments down below because a little icon shows up next to your name and I'm able to tell that you are a channel member and I can sort of associate who's who. Uh, and if you're a patron instead on Patreon, send me a private message on Patreon and that way I'll be able to keep a track of, you know, who's who and who's redeeming perks and whatnot. Remember as well, you don't have to, like, don't feel limited to one animal. It is one animal per month. But if you have already sponsored an animal and you'd like to sponsor another one, then, you know, feel free to let me know down below and we will get that implemented. There are no limits. If you've sponsored and you want to have a staff member named after you as well, then let me know down below. We'll do that as well. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that just about covers everything that I wanted to say to kick things off. Let's go ahead and take a look at the animal that we'll be adding today, right? Because I've talked about trading. I've talked about... Uh, oh, and I, I do just want to mention, I have your uh, mentions noted down previously some of you have asked for like staff names or uh sponsorships i have them noted down feel free to repeat yourself if you are worried that i might have missed yours in the past uh but i will you know in case there are new additions obviously let me know down below or send me a private message anyway that's all that done let's go ahead and take a look at the animal we'll be adding today again and as always with this sort of new trend or this new approach that we're taking we'll be looking at the zoopedia entry first then our time lapse and then uh, we actually get the animal in here. So we are today adding the hippopotamus. This has been uh, re re like requested over and over and over again repeatedly. And I've kept sort of being like, because I, lo I love hi hippo hippopotamuses, hippo hippopotami, hippo I love hippos. Right. I love them. I think they're adorable, first of all. I also think they're very interesting uh, in a variety of ways. I have my own fun facts about them. If the game doesn't share them, that I'll share once we reveal all the fun facts. So I've been like, every time it comes up, I've been like, oh man, I've got, I've got plans for them. I can't wait, but uh, it will be some time because they need a massive, massive tract of land, which is why we've got them up over here where we can give them that massive tract of land. The one concern I have, I suppose, is that I would like to be able to give a decent underwater viewing experiences with them as well, because they do walk on the water. So it'd be nice to be able to get nice and low and kind of like see them use the water. So that's one concern I have with regards to how we're going to make this space work. Uh, and apart from that as well, I'll probably be reworking some of these paths and whatnot. But that's a uh, that's okay. That's par for the course, right? That's that's par for the course. We'll see uh, how it all plays out. Anyway, back to Zoopedia. I just wanted to, I just wanted to touch on that because again, I've seen the request so often that uh, it's just, it's it's always uh, tough for me not to like just kind of uh, share what I have in mind exactly because it's fun, right? It's fun to like go along and whatnot. I think at least. Anyway, the hippopotamus, the hippopotamus amphibious, is vulnerable. Population in wild is one hundred twenty-five thousand to one hundred fifty thousand. The common hippopotamus, or hippopotamus amphibious, is a large mammal native to the rivers of sub-Saharan Africa. They are large, water-dwelling animals with long, protruding teeth, nostrils on the top of their snout, small ears, and thick gray-brown skin. Males are 13.2 feet to 16.5 feet long and weigh between 3,300 pounds and 4,400 pounds, whereas females measure between 11 feet and 14 feet and weigh 2,200 pounds to 3,300 pounds. So, the max, the highest Again, on, on, on average, it's an average range. The highest average female we've, uh, we've measured is approximately the same as the lowest average uh, weight of a, of a male. Uh, and as far as size is concerned, there's a bit more overlap. But, but as, like, sorry, as far as weight, l length is concerned, there's a bit more overlap. But as far as a weight is concerned, it seems to be, uh, like, yeah, relatively distinct, I guess. Ah, there's the plural, hippopotami. There you go. Learn, learn something new every day. <laughs> hippopotami face many threats. Chiefly, they are endangered by loss of habitat conflict with humans over land, plus the threat of hunting. The species is poached for its meat and the ivory found in their teeth. Many areas populated by hippos are officially protected, but enforcing these protections can be difficult. Some areas are not protected at all. In order to ensure the ongoing survival of the hippo, further conservation and action is needed. Fair enough. Looking at their natural habitat, 
as you can see, there's sort of it's a bit of a stretch. I'll be honest, bit of a stretch. But there's sort of a natural connection uh, with regards to like the Nile's transition to Sub-Saharan. Bit of a stretch, like I said, but you know, work with me here. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> they require quite a bit of land and quite a bit of water as well. A thousand four meters square of each, I believe. Let me just check for comparison's sake. If we take a look at, uh, where is the, there it is. If we take a look at you over here, what are we looking at? We are looking at, oh, oh thousand eight is this. But as more and more hippos are born, as more and more hippos join the group, the herd, whatever it's called, I'm sure we'll find out shortly, uh, that land requirement will become a lot more, uh, well, it'll, it'll be, uh, it'll grow, right? It'll, it'll, it'll grow rapidly. So I'm really hoping to use quite a bit of this uh, land over here for that purpose. Um, but, sorry for my uh, little sidestep there, back to Zupedia. It's a lot of land. I need to... For once, it might actually end up being that I don't make a large enough habitat in my first kind of like go at it. Uh, over two species data. Group size is 3 to 30, up to one male, up to 29 females. Male bachelor group size is 3. Female bachelor group size is 3 to 30. Dominant system, males are dominant. Mating system is polygatous, with a dominant male who will mate with his harem of females. Relation with humans is confident and guests cannot enter the habitat. Hippos are extremely dangerous. Um, you do not want to enter a habitat with a hippo unless you are, I guess, their keeper or otherwise, you know, very closely familiar with them. Sizes, again, on average, 15 feet long for males, 12.5 for females. Life expectancy is 51 years across the board, so they are quite uh, long-lived. And the weight, 38.50, 27.50 for males and females, respectively, in pounds. Sexual maturity is at 6 years. Sterility is at 40 years, so quite a bit of time spent uh, sterile, actually, which is... Ah, unfortunate. There will be some rehoming, I think, with the hippos. A number of offspring per mating event is 1, gestation incubation is 8 months, interbirth is 24 months, and reproduction is easy. Good stuff. Social needs. Hippos interact with each other, but do not form close groups or bonds. Mature males are semi-solitary and territorial, presiding over a stretch of river and allowing groups of females and non-challenging males to live there. I guess in captivity it's a little different. Because they're kind of, like, in such a small and confined space, they're all challenging males, I suppose. Anyway, uh, females will choose where to live based on the quality of the habitat, and thus there will be larger groups in better parts of the river. Hippos are known to be friendly to each other when in water, but can be aggressive towards each other when on land, especially when feeding. Now that is fascinating. I did not know that. I did not know that they were one way in the water and another way on land. I wonder why, actually. Is it because they can't fight as well while in water? So they're just like, hey... We're at our weakest, let's not uh, hurt ourselves. And on land, it's just like, hey, we're at our strongest, let's hurt ourselves. <laughs> um, I'm curious, actually. I'm very curious as to that different behavior uh, on land versus in the water. I assume that's why. I assume it's just a matter of, like, comfort level. Um, but the fact that it's worth noting to this extent... I'm, I'm, yeah, I, you know, maybe something to look up, or I'm sure some of you in the comments perhaps already know. I would, I would look forward to learning a bit more about that. Reproduction. Male hippos with better territory are more likely to be successful in finding a mate, due to the increase in probability that females will select their stretch of river to live in. How do you make your... do you like spruce it up? Do you like... is it the decor? Do you like, you know, don't just dump all your clothes between your bed and your chair, depending on what one you're, which one you're using? Like, how do you... as a hippo, how do you make your territory, you know, more... what, what do you... I'm curious. I'm curious. Males detect receptive females through smell before following and vocalizing at her until she allows him to mate with her. I, I've always loved the verbiage, like the way they do the vocalizing at her. It's just like the, it's, it's, it's very uh, evocative, let's call it, uh, until she allows him to mate with her. The two mate underwater, with the female's nostrils often being the only visible part of her above the surface. Eight months after intercourse, the female hippopotamus will give birth underwater to a single baby who will swim to the surface to take his first breath. Oh, that's cute. The, 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 the calves, sorry, stay with their mother until they are about, until they are between five and seven years old, at which point they will leave to find their own area to live away from related individuals. That's a very interesting, um, uh, like birth giving process, actually. Underwater birth and then swim to the surface to take his first breath. There's a, there's almost like a, there's almost like a, I don't know, something poetic about that in there. Oh, okay, interesting. 
Research status, of course, we have none of their fun facts. We will be unlocking them quickly, I hope. Uh, as far as things, they've got their their tires, waterfall. I do like the waterfall and metal frame. I'm a, I'm a fan of that thing. Uh, the uh, the gyro as well. Yeah, there's a couple of fun uh, fun toys. Some of my favorite toys actually, and some of my favorite uh, food enrichment items as well. I'm speaking as if I'm the like, I'm the animal, but like I love watching the animals interact with things like this. Of course, we got to have a mud bath as well. Honestly, with how big the space is probably gonna need to be, I wouldn't be surprised if we fit like four or five of these things. Snow, snowman skittle enrichment in the middle of uh, like its uh, its habitats. <laughs> what else have we got over here? Interest pieces enrichment. Of course, there's nothing. And world records. I mean, we're not uh, no, we're not sitting here just quite yet. But uh, maybe someday, maybe someday. All right. I guess that's the uh, Zoopedia entry looked at. If we take a look at animal trading really quickly, I wonder if we don't want to see if any hippos are available right off the bat. We have got a significant sum of conservation credits which is fantastic this is why i like doing the trading sessions and i like doing the trading sessions live because you'll remember um the last time we did it not this time but the last time we did it it was uh it was sort of out of uh shall we call it desperation maybe okay well, hang on a second let me, let me focus over here first real quick there's only the one female so oof really not good stats from frontier zoo so no rush there i guess we have a gold rank male nasser Ooh. Guys, yeah, stats are better. This guy's a little bit on the smaller size. Nasser is good, though. That appeal will uh, will help make us some money. Also, he's not 10,000 conservation credits. So let's go ahead and adopt you from the green zoos. Sure. And a female will perhaps wait for. The, um... Can I... Send to zoo. Over to our... Quarantine. Yep. And then we'll, 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 we'll get the female, females, plural, I guess I should say, um, after the time lapse. Uh, what was I getting at, right? 10,000 is a little bit on, on the, on, on the higher side that I'm willing to spend, even though we got so much. But, right, the, uh, the reason why I like the, uh, the live trading session is because you'll recall, again, two times, like, the, not this live stream, but the one before that, we, it was out of desperation. I think I'll use that word. It was out of desperation because we tried trading the animals, or we, we sort of slipped up in trading the animals, and uh, and they started collecting, and I, I, I couldn't keep up with, with getting rid of them, uh, so to speak, with giving them away and, and, and trading them out. But with the latest one, actually, I would say the latest one was even more desperation because we tried staying on top of trading the animals out over and over and over again. We tried trading out some of these jaguars. We tried trading out some of these uh, tortoises and whatnot, and it just wasn't nobody. There were no takers. And like, I don't want to give these guys off cheaply. You know, I don't want to give them off for like 10 conservation credits, 20 conservation credits. Uh, that just feels like I'm doing them a disservice. I mean, it's kind of an insult to the animals. And we have, we had rather, I should say, really good quality animals. So it felt kind of a, a shame to even consider that. Uh, some animals, of course, we were able to release, but by and large, we had some valuable animals that weren't uh, doing anything for us. And if we ran out of conservation credits, we wouldn't be able to pick up mu new animals. So that's why I like the, the live stream when things get that uh, desperate, let's call it, when, uh, you know, when we, we are, we're not making conservation credits, we're not able to get the trades out. Uh, the live stream helps a lot because we're all kind of there at the same time. We're able to coordinate prices and whatnot, and people are able to pick them up. And it worked out wonderfully. So again, you know, if you were able to pick up an animal uh, this last time, that's fantastic. I'm sure this will happen again. Hopefully, if you weren't able to pick one up this last time, you'll be able to pick one up this next time. But uh, yeah, it was a good time. It was a fun time, and, uh, and I am glad that we were able to not just empty out and, and let some of those animals continue to live their lives, uh, but also, you know, get some conservation credits to use uh, for my own self as well, because, uh, yeah, they're going to be handy, especially as we start adding some of these major African animals. I, I suspect a lot of them will be quite expensive to add. With no more time to waste, I think it's time for us to dive on in. It's kind of wild to be back over here and, and returning to uh, the time lapses at Elite Zoo South. I'm just kind of doing a mental uh, checklist over here. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Trying to find the best, uh, I, I like to start and end the time lapse at, like, similar angles. I'm trying to find, like, the best angle for this, because I'm not sure exactly how this is going to end up. Uh, we're going to go a bit, uh, a bit freeform-ish today with regards to my approach, because, uh, it's a massive space. Folks, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, this time lapse goes as well as uh, I think I'd hoped for slash expected. I, I was initially going to say it went as well as I'd expected, but usually when you say that, it means it's gone... <laughs> 
poorly uh but no it actually it actually goes pretty well i'm pretty pleased with uh, how this goes uh for our first kind of time lapse back there is a bit of a there is a bit of a sort of a uh, a gear shift that happens you know i don't want to like overplay it but i don't want to downplay it either but there is certainly a different vibe to doing a time lapse here than to doing it in like a sandbox mode zoo where it's kind of like yeah it's very difficult to screw up because the consequences well there are none basically but here there's uh there's a bit more pressure and again anything we make we have to kind of like live with for so many more episodes so uh so it's a different kind of vibe it's a different kind of pressure for sure but i'm i'm happy to say that i'm very pleased with uh how the things actually work out how the space works out as well there are some considerations that i maybe wish i had taken before i decided to make such a massive uh uh move but hey it is what it is uh if the need arises, I can make some adjustments to the space, but overall, I'm pleased with it, uh, and I hope uh, I hope you all will be as well. So, the hippo, as we touched on before the time lapse, takes quite a bit of space, and um, I wanted to make sure that when we had a bunch of hippos, we weren't going to have to uh, you know, later on worry about like, oh, are they going to have enough space to walk around and swim? So I go way over the top, way over the top. But better safe than sorry, I suppose. Hopefully that uh, hopefully that's. Hopefully that's true in this case. Uh, apart from that, though, there's something else that I go way over the top with, and that is this kind of underground passage. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it. It was, um, it, to be perfectly honest, I think a big part of me doesn't want to do the underwater viewing, but in the back of my head, I knew that it might be something I want, I like end up wanting to do, like just sort of like future planning, I guess you could say. Uh, and so I decided to make the space for it, dig the hole, dig the tunnel, put down the path and everything, because just in case, it would be a lot harder to do it after everything was like said and done. It would be a lot more difficult to go back and make the adjustments. Whereas if I do it now, uh, and then down the line, I decide I do or don't want this space to exist, it would be a lot easier to uh, to, to go about it. Again, like if I decide I don't want this space to exist, I just, I just don't do it. If I do want this space to exist, then at least I've kind of, you know, planned ahead as it were. So um, it does take up a little bit of time in this time lapse, but I'm not too upset about that, uh, despite the fact that we actually don't end up connecting it, at least today. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Personally, like, it's cool because hippos, they walk underwater and stuff and like, it's neat. But realistically speaking, like, okay, so we know that we can see that at any point in time, right? Uh, our guests, they need to be able to see it, is the logic of like making one of these spaces. Truth be told, no guest is ever going to come over here. All the way here, all the way underground, like, it's so far removed, like, in, in, a, in a real zoo, absolutely, guests would come over here, they'd be like, oh, I want to sit down and I'll grab grab a bike, come down over here, chill with the hippos in what would be sort of a dark, very moody kind of a cave, totally see it happening in real life, but guests are just not going to come down here so is it worth the like heartache i suppose and the uh the stress of trying to get this thing to work um and, and trying to get guests down there i'm not sure i'm not sure it's it's also just like it's so i mean i guess like you know it's, we've seen it a hundred times i guess is, is, is another thing um so that's that like that novelty isn't there anymore of being able to walk next to the the water i guess especially when we got the aquatic animals where you know there's a lot more going on than just walking under the water anyway uh i digress so that's just one thought that i kind of like worked on over there I, I i left room for me to kind of like flip flop a little bit and again based on your opinions as well make a decision but i think i'm going to leave that disconnected now over here i do put down the um overall space as well i think part of me was hoping to make sure that I had enough space, even though I was fairly confident, uh, and I can assure you we do have enough space, but uh, but I also want to make sure that everything would kind of connect all right and, and would work okay. Uh, what I thought would be really fun to do over here, actually, with regards to the space, uh, was to make a bit of a pavilion. Uh, a pavilion, if you, if you will, as, as I just did, and uh, I don't think I have any regrets, but I'll... Uh, Think about it when I go to sleep at night tonight, I'm sure. A hip pavilion. A place from which to rest and watch the hippos. We'll make a little construct. It'll fit into the um, the Nile monitor space we have right next to it. It'll kind of like hopefully blend in. Uh, I don't know about calling it seamlessly, but you know, it'll it'll blend in. Uh, and uh, I think it would be a nice space to um, like hang out. Yeah, grab a bite, relax. 
uh, before you continue your journey because again there's still a lot more of the zoo to watch from or to, to, to visit from beyond here either way no matter which way you're coming through from there's still a lot more to look at uh, so yeah building kind of this like uh, second layer of path if you will slightly elevated using a ramp of course uh, staying true to our uh, kind of accessibility challenge and whatnot but uh, yeah this like I always like I like these like double layer things I think they're making kind of fun um, we will make some tweaks to it to make sure that I am able to fit some uh, what are they called uh, like vendor stalls and stuff in here as well I'll do that I'll be doing that today itself and I do believe I actually make this space a little bit wider as well just in case I don't know why it's not like we're gonna get that many guests over here it's so far away from the entrance but I decide you know it would be the, the right thing to do I suppose it'll give us more room to put down benches and stuff as well and uh, and the next step is of course to actually build this pavilion space again um, I have certain I guess visuals that come to mind in my head when I think about a pavilion uh, so I'm trying to like, just kind of keep that in mind uh, you got the pl plaster walls um, I would typically say I would typically say that you'd get like an open um, like you wouldn't get glass panes instead you would have like an open view of the space however you do not want um, you, do not <laughs> you, you don't want uh, how should I how should I put this delicately um, it's not a bad idea to have a physical barrier between you and hippos at all times not just because of how violent they are from their front end but also from their back end and we'll actually touch on that after the time lapse as well a little bit um oh that reminds me you know what i forgot to do i forgot to assign a researcher to the hippos i'll need to remember to do that next session um but uh, but anyway putting down some stalls over here we'll go over what they are uh, after the time lapse of course i as always uh request some uh, name suggestions i actually got uh, a bunch of name suggestions for missed items from past episodes so thank you very much for that i'll have to kind of go through and and find a time to kind of get all those in because uh, i do like having things be named and all that so uh this would be nice to do but of course let's uh also as we add new spaces let's get those named as well and uh and yeah sort of uh then play play catch up a little bit as well so yeah here just kind of building the structure like i said we want you want to have covering basically in every direction we will be adding a roof i don't put the roof in this session i kind of like leave it open this session but you can see how by using the glass and the white plaster and the uh, black metal we have similar um materials and colors as the nile monitor uh area as well and that just helps kind of marry it all together uh this was a bit more I would definitely call this a bit of a simpler build than the uh, Nile um, dome, as it were. But I think it's largely as a result of it not being a dome. Simple, however, isn't bad. I quite like it. It is uh, not too sort of like not overstated. It's not too gaudy or anything. Um, and I think it's actually quite a nice place to just kind of hang out. I can totally see myself being here. I even like I love like the little like I I try to I try to make the little details. Uh, count where I can or when I can like having the window pane actually be on the farther side so if you were standing around you want to put your drink down on the ledge um, then you have kind of space to do it like I don't know uh, maybe it's a little silly on my end but I, I like doing that kind of stuff uh, but yeah you know it's 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 uh I think it works quite nicely what I want to do though is add some more decorative elements around it and of course build a roof over top of it but that is something we'll be saving for next time because there's still some other stuff I wanted to tackle uh, with regards to the habitat itself that was a bit more urgent than just the decorative stuff outside of the habitat uh, which uh, I imagine uh, at least some of you will will agree with me on um, but yeah so sort of putting the concrete down because really no other barrier type is strong enough if I recall correctly it needs to be grade six to hold back hippos if I recall correctly and I think concrete is the only grade six you can get electrified fencing as well but only when it's electrified is it uh, grade six uh, the other option I have is of course to put down like building blocks like more plaster or glass or what have you but um I thought we'd go with the concrete. I might I might put in some windows or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Over here, just making some adjustments to the terrain because I wanted to make sure that keepers are able to get in without trouble. Uh, and I also wanted to make sure that the uh, the hippos themselves had a bit of a, a smooth transition into the water. I don't want them... I don't think they can, <laughs> like, cannonball into the water. Uh, but I don't want them doing that anyway. I also want to make sure they're able to get out smoothly. So 
Put down some foliage as well. Not too pleased with how these reeds and stuff look, so I do get rid of them. I'll, I'll have to mull over the vegetation a bit more, honestly. I'll have to mull over... Again, I, I always struggle with vast empty expanses, vast open spaces. They're just not my thing. <laughs> I, I struggle with them always, but we tend to make them work after, uh, after I spend some time deliberating. Or at least I think, so if you disagree, feel free to let me know. But I'm putting down a couple of their uh, enrichment items, some of their you know, food items and stuff like that as well. Uh, and I will have to step away back to the drawing board and figure out exactly what I want as far as um, as far as the, uh, the, the the plains area is concerned. Also building a bit of a hard shelter. Can you imagine, like, there's such an intimate, like, relationship with a hippo. You know, if they're sleeping in this little hard shelter, you're very close to it. I thought that would be quite epic. It, I, I would love to, it would be quite interesting, I think, um, as long as it gets cleaned regularly. But uh, I thought this would be a nice touch. Put down some pillars, give it some support, put down some bedding, and uh, that is that. It also integrates again to the uh, little Nile uh, section we have as well. Um, and that's pretty much the time lapse today. Putting down a couple of ATM machines, some bins, some benches, things like that. But that is it for the time lapse today, folks. We will be going back to regular speed. And we'll be back here next session to cap off some of the beautification. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse, and somehow, some way, I still managed to make a space that is much larger than the animal actually needs. Well, for starters, we'll see how it uh, all plays out as more and more animals get brought in. Obviously, as they have little children, little baby hippos running around, and as they, uh, well, you know, as we, as we start needing to make uh, room for them, uh, and not just the uh, the primary hippos that we bring into the zoo. Um, I'm a little, honestly, I'm a little <laughs> uh, thrown off that I was able to... Uh, uh, go so over the top. Uh, initially, I was so concerned that I wouldn't um, wouldn't even be able to, uh, to 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 match the number that that the uh, game was looking for, and then I'd have to like force correct and expand. But instead, I find myself uh, where I, I guess I should have expected myself, and where many of you maybe did expect myself to uh, end up, which is uh, again just a quick uh, quick look at the number um, eighteen thousand <laughs> five hundred twelve uh, meters square, which is. Um, yeah, more, more than enough. More than enough. We might, uh, I mean, if we need to, we might split this into pieces or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. But I, I want to make sure that we, you know what? I take it back. That's a lie. We're going to keep this as it is. And we're going to see the hippos run around. They're going to have a wonderful time. They might use all the space. They might not use all the space. They'll do what they want to. And uh, the, the most interesting aspect is actually going to be getting the guests uh, down over here. Maybe. Where, 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 where am I even? Oh, this is such a maze. There we go. Down over here. Maybe. The reason why I say maybe is because I'm not exactly sure if I want to... Look, okay, well, let, let's be real. Let's be real. Guests will never use this space. They will never, ever. In real life, absolutely. Like, the, the hippo walk or whatever you want to call it, absolutely. But in the game, honestly, I'd be surprised if guests even make it all the way over to here. We might see four or five people here on average at any given time. Like, take a look at uh, this space over here, right? Like, we don't get that many guests up over here. Every once in a while, we'll have a couple of folks coming through. Uh, so that's just the reality of uh, the situation with this, uh, with the zoo, with, with, with the space in particular, with everything being so far away, with the entrance being so far away, and people having to, you know, leg it all the way to here, and there being such another such a variety of other things to see as well uh chances are we're not gonna get that many guests over here and of the guests that do come over here chances are not too many are going to um seek out this uh, extremely long uh passage down over here right it's the extra distance and all that we could put some washrooms and food and all that kind of stuff down there but i don't think that's going to do enough to draw people in if we did however um want to make that connection i would have to rework this space a little bit what i'd probably do is uh, integrate like a a little tunnel or something somewhere over here so guests could go uh, down and all the way over to it's a hard to spot uh, they got to go down got to go past this so they'd go like down around over down you see what I mean it's a long distance it's a very long distance so I might I might not do that that was just in case I wanted to I wanted to keep that placeholder in there so I didn't regret afterwards going damn I really wish I put a path down there we can always get rid of it but uh, adding it in later would have been uh, Painful, to say the least. Now, hopefully, this isn't too tightly packed. We're probably going to have to, like, fuss around with this stuff a little bit in the future, just adjusting some of these lines so that this uh, can continue as I kind of had in mind. And I'll be honest, this has actually expanded in a little bit of an unexpected direction. I wasn't quite anticipating this. We might shorten this a bit, in fact, 
We might like cut this off over here or something. A couple of adjustments to make as I try and make room for some of the other animals that I want to introduce in this space as well. Because we've got uh, the gorillas up over here. They're able to get up to here. I have some room over here. I don't know if the animals that I was hoping to put in over here uh, will still fit over here. I think they'll need more room than this actually. Um, well, not just here, but like I guess this entire area. So uh, we'll have to. Uh, I'll have to make some adjustments for that. And I've got to make. There's so much going on. Anyways, the hippos need a lot of space, and it's definitely uh, see, seeing. I mean, seeing this, we might. Yeah, we might cut this short. Like that. In fact, you know what? Why don't we leave it for later? Because I want to get the animals in here. We'll leave it for later. We'll do, we'll do it next session because I do have to come back and finish this. Uh, uh, this pavilion and stuff as well, so we'll leave it for later. Let's go ahead and take a look at animal trading really quickly. Uh, take a look at it. You can you can kind of tell how um, we have uh, Sosa here. Oh, that's not not very good stats at all, but one of many, I suppose. Let's go ahead and adopt you for 196 from Frontier Zoo. So sure, and hopefully we'll get some more uh, females as options in the near-ish future. You guys are all really kind of pricey, aren't they? Ten thousand. I mean, we could afford them, but you know what? We've got our mail already. What's the point of looking around over here and regretting not waiting or what have you? So let's go ahead and send you to our um, quarantine as well. Uh, and what I was saying just before I, I uh, wanted to get uh, pick, pick her up is uh, I am definitely, I'll be 100% transparent with you, I'm definitely at least a little thrown off still coming back to Elitsu South and just readjusting to the spaces and, and all the additional responsibilities as we hit play. All the additional responsibilities that come with running an actual franchise. Again, it comes up uh, every time there's a new... Oh, look at that frame rate, though. Oof. Oof, we're getting there, folks. This is, uh... Hmm. Something I'm going to have to start considering is maybe we do have to, uh... We add a couple more of the animals that I have planned, and then we, we, we kind of have to do the safari or something to, to cap off the, uh... To cap off Elitsu South. It's still a long way to go, but, uh... I would be... I'd be lying if, uh... If I didn't, need, if I didn't say I needed to start considering this seriously, um, but as I was saying on the topic of being transparent, uh, just like all the responsibilities that come with uh, with actually running a franchise, like with the uh, with the mini series that we do with the DLC, it's very easy for me to be like, okay, look, the angry guests don't matter, uh, no washrooms and stuff doesn't matter, uh, so things move a lot more quickly. Whereas over here, obviously, I do have to concern myself with uh, all of those little elements, right? We have to make sure that we have. Uh, everything that we need to have uh, for the guests to actually be happy. Otherwise, we're going to have much bigger problems on our hands. Uh, now, naturally, of course, our first enclosure back, we need to have a waterfall in here. Uh, this wasn't my uh, plan before today, actually. Or basically, while we were doing the uh, the mini miniseries, uh, I had an idea of like where I wanted the hippos to go already, of course. Uh, I've had that for a long time. And then... I guess earlier today or maybe yesterday it's all blurry now uh but at some point in the very recent um past i was like you know what'd be really cool is if like there was a giant river and that giant river um poured out as a waterfall into the massive um body of water we have for the tortoises and so here we are and so here we go to a little bit so up we in there I might need to like push some of this terrain back over here. I can nudge you back a little. There. And we even ever so slightly. And you'll notice at the beginning of the time lapse I was actually testing this out. Looks like we are able to push like adjust that, so that works out nicely for us. There we go. There's a body of water over there that's preventing us from pushing it too far back from there, but that's okay. Because this is fine by me. I believe this is where the line was. Uh, a little bit higher, looks like. Oh, that's not right. This this is probably right. Yeah, because this tree was definitely not uh, underwater. These guys need to get lowered. It's always hard for me to like tell because a lot of the time uh, they do end up higher than uh, than they supposedly should. We got the right look going. Definitely lower some of these guys. I really wish it was easier to like isolate what you want to select and what you don't want to select. That. Oh, these should be like selection modes, you know? Like select uh, only architectural pieces, select only nature pieces, select only VFX pieces. And then when you draw a box, it'll only select that class of, of things. This still looks right, right? I think so. We need to tweak it. We'll tweak it again later. Let's go ahead and 
get those midsections. Bit, pull you out much. There we go. And you know, we'll, we'll do our usual when the time comes. Put down a couple of like rocks and stuff over here. Make this a bit more um, dynamic as well. Like that. Two. Sorry. Four. This. Waterfall top again. Put a couple of these down over here so it looks like it's actually like hitting something and then splashing off. There we go. Yeah, and then where is my waterfall bottom? Where's the murky? Um, I guess it must have been must be listed like in a different way. No matter is this from a distance, does this look right? That one doesn't. Yeah, we'll we'll fine tune this at a at a later point in time. Like I might want to widen that lower section. But the uh, the idea is there. I can't even. There we go. The idea is there. I think you can tell what's kind of like going on over there. I believe our hippos are indeed yes ready to uh, leave. Go ahead and move you two over to a space that will require a name. So feel free to drop your suggestions in the comments down below. Meanwhile, Sophia over here has passed away. Oh, are we still are we still doing this weird thing where animals just kind of like die in strange ways? Like, look, what is this pose? That ain't right, man. I didn't write. Let's get a vet over. That's sad. Um, all right, back up over here. So not only do we need a name for our uh, enclosure, which of course goes maybe without saying, uh, but not only do we need that, we also need names for our over here, the gulpy energy. We also have a cosmic cow ice cream, just a memento. That's fantastic. An information center, and. A pip shot water. So quite a few things that need names over here. So again, feel free to drop those suggestions in the comments down below, and I will uh, happily integrate uh, integrate some picks uh, probably next session. I will see how much naming we have next session versus how much uh, building we have next session. I'm thinking next session what we'll probably do is uh, cap this space off. See, that's another thing. I mean, I guess I should uh, uh, mention as well on the topic of like what's quicker versus slower in uh, in in the franchise. Uh, it, making spaces for the guests as well as the animals is a big, uh, big thing, right? Like needing to put down all the, the food spaces and whatnot. Those are things that need decorations uh, as well. So next session, in fact, I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cap this space off. And the more I think about it, the, the less I kind of like this uh, underwater viewing space. It's a nice idea, uh, but just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. You know, the age old saying, just because you did it doesn't mean you should stop to think if you should have yeah all the all the variants of of that same line of thinking so uh i don't know i don't know if i'll uh how did you get up here i don't know if i'll uh make that underwater thing actually be uh be accessible the the underwater viewing actually be accessible raise this up a bit more make this even harder to get to it's just so that they can even I'm up here, really. All right, cool. Hippo's coming through shortly. I gotta actually add this to my work zones as well. Uh, zoo, staff, work zones. <laughs> uh, one of the names I'll be inserting is, a, is an educator name, but I'll be doing that next time. It came with a funny joke, but uh, hence the chuckle. But uh, right now I'm looking for yeah, work zones. And this will be Africa... Af Africa West, right? It's been so long. Africa West, indeed. Go ahead and add all of that. Great. Fantastic. We have our first hippo. Look at the size of them. Oh, I love them. I love, I love hippos. They are so cute. Uh, well, hang on. First, first of all, they seem happy with the space. Not so happy about the terrain. We'll have to adjust that. That's fair. More than enough water, more than enough land. Some of the trees they're not too happy about, but it's not actually impacting them too heavily. Adult population, they would like some more adults. We'll definitely look into that. We need some more female options, though, for that. We need less long grass. Okay. More soil, more rock. Oh, okay. 
More soil, more rock. I had a feeling more soil, but more rock is actually a bit of a surprise. Go ahead and lower the intensity a bit, up the size a bit. There we go. Two birds, one stone as we get rid of some of the grass here. It's a bit higher, actually. There we go. Rock. I gotta figure out where to put the rock in, actually. Okay. We can change uh, terrain without it uh, chugging along, eh? My hope, by the way, is also that guests will be able to view from over here. We'll see if the hippos come here, and then we'll clear out some of these uh, bushes and whatnot. I think it's a pretty cool uh, little spot to check them out from. Some of this long grass, excellent. There's some over here. They really don't like long grass. They're like me. Wait, where'd they go? They're already underwater immediately. No time wasted getting underwater. All right, let's go ahead and add some more soil here. More up there, some more here as well. Make it good. Just trying to get rid of all the long grass first. And then what we'll do is we'll add the, uh, the rock in. Just to the edge over here. Makes sense. Reduce we'll size a little bit. There we go. That is not making dent. Really, eh? Doing nothing for him. Alright. We'll rock down over here as well on this side. So gonna have to like make make better blends and stuff with the texture. I was really not expecting that much rock. You know what actually? That's uh maybe for the better, because then what we'll do is why don't we go ahead and like do something a bit more drastic over here, right? Uh, that was maybe not the best set of moves, but we'll uh We'll come up with something. Go. A little rock formation or something, you know. Mini mountain, if you will. Sure. Comes the rain now. I have, I have, I'll be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing here. But, uh, looks interesting. <laughs> looks different. Break, breaks up the space a little bit. Breaks up the space a little bit. Maybe I'll do a little bit of research as to like what the train might actually uh, hold in reference to their actual living spaces, you know? Alright, alright. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Looking, uh, looking like, looking like something. Looks like, like lumps of ice cream. Looks like scoops that are starting to melt, actually. Um, I wonder if I'll just like make these into mountains or something. But for now, making like little Mises, I guess. Hmm. I don't know if I like that. Let's do that. Just kind of an excuse to down rock somewhere. Rough rock up on you. Right all around. And we'll put some like smooth rock or something around it. And then we'll integrate it a bit better. Uh, next session we'll put down some rocks and stuff and, and make it feel like it's a bit more uh, integrated with the space, right? Because right now it just it sticks out like a sore thumb and doesn't really belong at all. No, uh, no argument about that. Get the rock spreading out a little bit. There we go. Almost. We need like 20% rock. There we go. Spot on. Dangerous animal escaped. Is that our... Oh, it is you. Of course, this problem has not been uh, corrected yet, I assume. I assume. We'll find out. Alright, where are my hippos? I want to watch some hippos run around. <laughs> there they are. Hello. E, buddy. What are you doing? Enjoying this space? Looks like they're not able to escape, otherwise I probably would have... Every time the uh, dangerous animal has escaped warning came up, I was like, oh, there go the hippos. But I guess we've uh, done a better job than I anticipated. Moment of truth, though. If we take a look at the habitat, looks like they are pretty well kept in. Okay, great. Wonderful. Question is, though, where's my other hippo? They have such a massive amount of space to play in. 
Oh, look at that perfect. Look at that perfect, like, stop there. And texture. It is gorgeous, that level of detail. Oh, wow, look at that. Just look at the level of detail. Oh, okay, my mind is... I'm... Wow. Just wow. Like, okay, like, can we take... Can we take a serious moment here? Look at... Look at the... Look at the level of texture. Like, just the level of detail in this texture. And, like, the the shine always kind of, like, helps things like this pop in, uh, in, in 3D art. But, like, just look at that. You can see, like, the wrinkling and stuff. Oh, my God. If I turn my flashlight off, it's a little less, uh, glaring, I suppose. <laughs> glaring. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but, like... Wow, though. Like, just, like, the... The, the, the... Uh, what, what, what are these called? Uh, what's the name? They have a name, like, uh, like, freckles, I guess, and stuff. But there's, like, a generic term for it. Wow. Just wow. Also, I love hippo ears, by the way. Just, like... Look at that. Except, I don't know why that suddenly happened, but look at that. That, I might, you know, that might... Might be the thumbnail. A little less, uh... I mean, I'm sure some of y'all would recognize it immediately, but, uh... I might be, uh, too tempted to do a better... Oh, hello. Be like a full-on... Look at that. I love... I love... It's just, I love the shapes. The hip hippos have, like, excellent shapes. You know what I mean? Like, look at that. Look at these shapes, right? They're just so... Look, look, look at the little legs. Look at the little stubby legs. Look at the little... Like, it's just... They're just... They're so, they're so pleasing to the eye. I love hippos. Hippos, like, the, they're just... <laughs> they're so fun to look at, but they are terrifyingly dangerous. Again, they are terrifyingly dangerous. No two ways about that statement. Too bad about the rain, though, eh? Eventually... We'll have this space covered up and the rain won't matter. But hey, it looks like we have our first uh, hippo watchers. Oh. Look at that. Just <laughs> walking on walking on the ground underwater. I love that they can do that. Up you go. Kind of strange animation there. <laughs> it's like... You just like don't allow the animal to go up there. And the toys and stuff are pretty well spread out as well, so we should see well, pretty well spread out in this area, so we should see like them move around a little bit. If they go further off, it'll be for the rubbing pillar off in the distance. Um, I don't know if I necessarily want to uh have them going that far off though is the thing, I guess. Let me let me see if I cannot find another Hippo oh, Animal Trading. Hippo female. Alika here, or Alika, Alika, gold, arse error in value, Mandy Lou's par Paradise, I assume, I assume the name is Mandy Lou's Paradise, not value equals to, <laughs> or parse error in, not sure what the uh, error would be, I don't know if like the apostrophe or something is throwing the game off, but uh, either way, Alika is ours now. And is going over to quarantine. The high quality female. More females is probably a good idea just to get babies a little bit sooner. Come on now. There we go. Beautiful. Reschedule. Just so nice to see the, uh, the, 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 the trade center be so empty. Oh, I was like, where's the hippo? Meanwhile, watch it's like butt go off screen. All right. Now the sun's up. No more rain. Look at those gorgeous colors. You've lost that sheen from earlier, outside of like when there's like rim lighting, when there's like edge lighting. But, uh... But still, it looks absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Oh my god. The artists have done such a great job. Accurate! You know, accurate. Honestly, okay, so I was just... <laughs> this keeper's like, oh, well, I'm gonna go over there. So I was just about to say, it's like the level of detail and how much, like, attention to detail there is is absolutely impressive. You know, I was just like, again, it, it, it does blow my mind, right? I was just gonna mention that when I saw that happening. And it, it is, it is, it is, it is how hippos go about their business. They, um, they use their tails and they, like, just kind of splatter it around. It just flies everywhere. 
Uh, and yeah, you'll see any place that there are hippos, they will typically actually put signs down uh, and they'll call it like, you know, like danger hippo splash zone or, you know, stay far from here because it's a hippo splash zone or hippo splash zone is a term that I've typically heard. I'm sure there are others elsewhere. Uh, but yes, that is, uh, that is, that is, that is actually very accurate. And it's, uh, it, it, I know this might sound funny, but it genuinely is a testament to the, uh, effort that the, uh, the, the the devs have put into like every aspect of the animals we we talked previously at Litsu north i think about how like the different animals have different uh shapes for their feces and like they also have different animations obviously like th there's something like okay like a like a squatting or something is is one thing but this is you know a whole other level i'm not going to go around just watching <laughs> i mean knowing my luck that is what's going to end up happening every time i go and zoom into one now it's just going to be like <laughs> going about its business but uh <laughs> but uh but 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 that's not my i'm not i'm not I'm not chasing that obviously but i just thought it was uh, an interesting bit of timing <laughs> bit of luck and bit of detail good stuff more western lowland gorilla babies good stuff you guys gonna you guys gonna get up to something you're awfully close for animals that aren't very social no nothing yet Dude's just like, I need a collection of women before I'll pick one. Gonna be provided with just one. I'm always, uh, I've mentioned this before, I'm always hesitant to use the word, uh, harem because it's all, all it's often misused in English. Um, what a harem is, actually is versus what it is, uh, described as in, uh, in, uh, sort of, let's call it, for lack of a better word, Western interpretation often very I incorrect so i'm hesitant to use that word look at that look, look at that okay keeper get out of the way go 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 you're ruin you're ruining the shot ah now he stopped moving oh okay come on keep going the balloon off in the distance these two walking together great just nope <laughs> dude is not interested are you yawning you're about to you are aren't you no, you're not. Okay, good. Good. Oh, man. The underbelly. Again, just absolutely beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Where's my other hippo? Got them coming. Look at those. It's quite a few giraffes, man. This is a this is a big group of giraffes. That is amazing. That was beautiful. Just like seeing it from the distance over here and just seeing like a bunch of them just walking to the side there. That was great. I would, man. I can't wait to go back to the zoo. Been uh, it's been some time. It's been over, been well over a year actually. That was great. It's also cool to see just how active this space is, really. Here and even up over here, I thought we saw a decent crowd earlier. Too bad those guys aren't all kind of like flocking up over here to see the new animal. I haven't put down donation bins or anything yet. I'm well aware of that. Don't worry. But uh, I just figured we'd like get get the animal in here. But it looks like yeah, it looks like we're not seeing. Well, there's our new hippo. Not seeing too many crowds up over here, and I do wonder what we can do to encourage that. I mean, we will be adding more animals. We'll be adding more animals up over here. We'll be adding more animals over here. I need to check the space I have before I can commit to that statement. We'll do that after these guys are, uh, you know, properly settled in. Uh, but we will be adding an animal over here as well. I'm not exactly sure how uh, it'll work out. If it'll work how I had initially kind of like thought it might. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Hey, buddy. <laughs> that was so cute. Oh, we got some trouble over here, looks like. Of course. Of course. Go ahead and select all. Who do we uh, do the uh, method over here? Looks like Bennu gets to stay. Bennu and Benjamin. All right. Bennu and Benjamin get to stay. So select all. Benjamin, Bennu. Bennu's a little bit on the old side, eh? That is, this is the only fertile female that we uh, we had. Everybody else at the trade center. Be the right one. Yeah. We'll see what comes of it, if anything. We'll have to keep an eye out for it, because it might end up empty over here. But, uh, folks, I do think... 
if I may make a uh, hip hop proposal. I propose we um with that yawn. Follow the session over here. You just yawn underwater. You just I wonder if they're just using the same animation set or something. Yawning underwater. I don't I don't know how I don't know if that anyway. Uh we'll we'll contemplate that. We'll ponder that uh next session, folks. I hope you enjoyed this uh return to adding animals to Elitsu South. I hope you enjoyed the return to adding uh waterfalls to Elitsu. Where'd my waterfall go? There we go. The return to adding waterfalls to Elite Sioux South. Hope you enjoyed the session today as a whole. Again, just as a reminder, folks, if you've been enjoying, leave a like, please. It does make a very big difference. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it does a very, make a very big difference as well, especially after the uh, kind of change in uh, sort of scheduling and programming, temporary as it might have been. It does make a big difference. And as I was saying earlier as well, again, try not to mention this too often at all. Don't ever feel obligated, but if you wanted to support the channel in some other ways as well, becoming a channel member or a patron are excellent ways to do so. Uh, links to both of those are in the description down below. They really do help the channel and they help these long running series as well. For those of you that are members or patrons or both, those of you that become new members, patrons open to anyone who is a member or patron. Again, do not forget your perks if you'd like to take advantage of them. If you would like a sponsor board, um, then let me know which animal. If you would like to have a staff member named after, you know, if you'd like to get a name in there, let me know who and what and and, and, and we'll, we'll make it so. Again, if you're a member, leave a comment down below. If you're on Patreon, shoot me a private message there just to help me keep things kind of organized and, and sort of verified and whatnot. But apart from that, folks, that is it for this session. Thank you all very much. And as always, a massive thanks goes out to all the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Again, y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.